Okay, I start my day off by cooking my own breakfast, you know, before I have to fly out the door to do things. My day normally consists of rescuing anything from men, women, children, the occasional stray animal, flying through whatever random hoops that people require me to fly through. And when the day's done, I just fly, you know, over to some random taco joint, buy a few tacos, fly back home, sit down, and have a nice relaxing meal to myself. To date, the only Superman game I've played is The Death and Return of Superman on Sega Genesis. Today I'm taking on Superman 64 because I don't think it's anywhere near as bad as everyone makes it out to be. You gotta pay me in tacos, right? Hey, whoa, I guess I'm going to be your uh, narrator here for this playthrough of uh, Superman 64. Should be interesting. Alright, looks like it's in three different languages. I'm going to do new game. One player. No one gives a shit about the Rumble Pack. In short time, your fate will be sealed. Shorter Superman. than you know. You will never find your friends in this virtual world. Then there's right, no what the time hell just waste. happened? Apparently we just get dropped in the first level with no story or lead-in. We're just flying through rings. Alright, let's go back and look what the hell just happened. Apparently our characters are standing in front of something that looks like a goddamn Stargate. The next thing you know, they're getting sucked into some virtual world that Lex Luthor made for Superman. And now we're forced to fly through rings to get to the next level. Good lord, we're only a couple minutes into this game, we're already stuck on a wall. Whether it's because of the shitty camera angles that were prevalent in many of the Nintendo 64 games, or because two monkeys in a room couldn't figure out how to fix the damn bugs, we're stuck with an almost unplayable game that has a lot of bugs that will pretty much hinder you getting anywhere close to finishing this game. Alright, and on a side note, I hope you enjoy what you're seeing right here. This ring maze is what you have to do for the first 10 to 15 minutes of this game. So if you don't enjoy traversing through this shit, or you're not good at flying, you're probably not going to enjoy this game, you might as well just turn it off. Alright, now we've reached the first minigame section. Essentially all you gotta do is pick up the cars off the road and throw them so they don't crash into people. What the hell? What, what is this? When was the last time you saw Superman do that? It'd be like if you came home from a hard day's work and rather than taking your shoes off like a normal human being, you just come through the door, take off your shoe and kick it across the goddamn room. Oh boy, more rings again. Alright, the object this time is to pick up the cop car and take it safely to the end without getting killed by these assholes. At least you don't have to throw the car this time! Alright, now you have to face these enemies called Dark Shadows. Good lord, what is he doing? What is he doing? What kind of fighting is this? Good lord, he just judo chopped him! This is terrible! I've seen better fighting animation on bad dudes or kung fu! More rings again. Alright, now the object is to use your super breath in order to put out these tornadoes. That thing you just passed up, that's your super breath. If you don't get this, you're not going to be able to use it. Now that you've got your super breath charged up, you have to get as close as you can to the tornadoes and use your super power in order to put them out. If you stand too far back, you're just going to end up wasting your super breath and fail the mission. Now, if you possess enough skill, and you have a lot of patience, you might actually get to the next level. Finally, we're on to the next part of the game. Now, this should be real easy. All we have to do is go around and destroy the bombs before they blow up. This section should be a huge improvement over the previous one. Fuck my life! The first thing you're going to encounter here are these hazardous trash compactors that keep firing at you. But it's because of the lack of control over your character, or the overpowering of these enemies, this section again is uninspiring. 
Then once you destroy the computer, it will let you into the next room. Once in the next room, you have three paths to choose from. You try door number one, door number two, door number three, and nothing. Now this has all happened to us as gamers. So we go back, we try to retrace our steps to see if we missed something, maybe there's a pressure point, or some secret door we missed, and nothing. So then we start doing a desperate act, like flying, or going over and punching the damn keypad of the door, and still, nothing. Then the game starts getting pissed, and gives you a tip and says, hey dummy, this is how you get to the next part of the game. Except it doesn't make any sense. So you try one more desperate act, and you glitch to the floor. Great, that's exactly what I wanted to do, go swimming. See, that's the kind of bullshit I'm talking about right there. You spend multiple hours going through a game, and then you get stuck in a wall. Well, thankfully, Super Arthur here didn't do another playthrough, so I don't have to watch any more of this. But there's got to be something redeeming about this game. Alright, let's go back to the main menu. We got multiplayer fight. Let's see what that is. How bad could it be? Alright, looks like we're selecting number of players. Looks like we're selecting the level. And then it looks like we're selecting the time duration. That's kind of a weird option. Okay, it looks like we're going to be flying ships around. I guess we'll be doing like a versus type mode. Yep, we're definitely in ships. Looks like we'll be flying around. You can see the crosshairs there. Oh great, this is, this is real fun. I guess we're in spaceships that don't have any inertia or anything on them. Mother of God, it's a Star Fox ripoff. Look, look at that. Holy crap. And that's it. That's that's the game right there. That's all it is. Holy shit. Look at this. You just fly straight at your enemy. You just keep firing and you see who's lucky enough to win. Boy, that's a great game. All right, let's go ahead and try this next boat. I'm losing my patience. Multiplayer race. All right, let's see what we get to do here. We get to select a number of players. All right. We don't get to select the level. We just pick the time duration. We get to pick our characters. And we start out facing each other. And wow, there you go. Well, wow. Exciting. Apparently we can't die in this mode too. Oh, okay, now that these two have stopped finger popping each other's assholes, you see that one of them produces rings that you gotta fly through. Boy, this is helpful. I still don't know what's going on. Are we supposed to be flying through the rings? Is this the whole point? Is there a time duration? What the fuck is going on?! This is where I really start to lose it right here. If you're gonna copy a good game like Star Fox, at least do a good job. You can't tell me you couldn't find programmers who could just rip off a game. Apparently you have no scruples because you already put it on your game. At least do a decent job of it. But no, they screwed up, so now we have to pay the price. So what they ended up doing was putting a shittier secondary game on top of the one of the worst games of all time, making this game the biggest waste of time ever. What the hell? Who, who the hell greenlit this? Who honestly thought that this was a completed game? God, I can't take this anymore. I know I was talking about freaking flying through hoops, but I didn't mean it literally. Gah! What is wrong with these people?
should have known better than to try to find redemption in a game that depicts Superman with a mullet. It's like someone tried to give the dev team behind Shaq Fu a second chance. <laughs>